come, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. I am not alone. You are with me. You have become the defenders of the faith. Whatever is in that name, William. I pass it on to you. Before we go on, if you write that name, William, write that. Are you ready to go? The first word, W-I-L-L, -L, wheel. The next word, I. And the next part, A-M. Wheel, I am. You must have a wheel. Your personality, your life, the I must have a will. Every day you wake up, you are tired, you are weak, you are fatigued, you say, no, I am will. Will I am. You are running. And something comes before you. That thing wants to stop you. you. Say, will I am. I'll go through this hurdle. You're doing something. You think you've done the best in your life. Somebody comes to you and he looks at what have you done after all. You have the tendency to be discouraged. They don't appreciate what I do. You wake up. That one, the I inside you, says, Will I am. It is that by the power of the Spirit. That makes you not to cringe, not to compromise, not to collapse when things are against you. And you remember, will I am when you become 50, you become 60, you become 70, you become 80. By the grace of God, I'll be 83 just a few days' time. And your colleagues, your friends, they said, we have retired at 70. Why are you still running? Then you remember you are will, I am. It is that will. That keeps you running. Amen. That keeps you standing. Amen. Everything that God has given me, I'm ready to pour upon Cameroon. <clears throat> if I don't finish now, I'll come back to you again. Raise, raise up your hand and let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Your good people are here. Your grace has made them good. Your grace has transformed their lives. And the Spirit of God is coming upon them in great power. Raise up your people here to do the work of God in this nation. Lord, I pray, tiredness will vanish away. Discouragement will vanish away. What the devil thought we could not do. Here in this land, Lord, raise up your people by your spirit. They will do it in Jesus' name.
New power upon your life. New anointing upon your life. New purposefulness in your life. You will do what God has ordained you will do in this land. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God has blessed you. You can sit down. Today we're still continue, we're continuing with impact. Great impact, greater impact in ministry. And a gracious uh, transformation that we have. And the good paths that will follow. So that everything God says you will do. My brother, my sister, you will do. Today we're looking at growing impact in ministry through the Holy Spirit. Please, I don't want you to say I have the Spirit already. I know many of our people, many people here, you have the Spirit of God. It is what you do with the Spirit that makes you have greater growing impact in ministry. God told Moses, bring 70 people that you know. And I am going to put part of the Spirit on you, on them. And so Moses brought 70 elders. And the Lord put the Spirit on them. After that Spirit came upon them. I'm searching and reading from that chapter of Numbers. What did they do? And I turn over the scriptures, Numbers 11, Numbers 12, Numbers 13, Numbers 14, Numbers 15, Numbers 16, and I can see the 70. What are they doing? It's not what you receive, it's what you do with what you receive. I see one man Joshua and God took the spirit of Moses and he put it into Joshua and I look at Joshua 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, 24 and I see what Joshua did with the spirit he received you receive the Holy Ghost. But what are you going to do with the Spirit that you receive? Growing impact in ministry through the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Those apostles received the Holy Ghost. They had been saved. Their names were written in heaven. They were sanctified. Jesus prayed, sanctify them through thy truth. That word is true. They were of one accord in one place. Then they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. I see them in Jerusalem. 
And then it says, San Judea. They're slowly going to Judea. And in Samaria. They didn't go to Samaria. Until the persecution came and drove them out. It's the spirit that should have led them to Samaria. But they didn't do that. They waited until persecution drove them to Samaria. And to the uttermost parts of the earth. I can't see them going to the uttermost part in chapter 3, chapter 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They were just around there doing merry go round. You see power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you move, or the Spirit moves you to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the other one's part of the earth. Acts chapter 19, verse 2. In Acts chapter 19, verse 2, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And Paul the Apostle got to Ephesus. They were cool and cold. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They were steadfast in doctrine, but they stayed pure. They did not go anywhere. And Paul said, you're not moving. You're not active. You're not evangelizing. You're just there. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They lived without fire. Without fervency. They were just normal, normal, regular people. Believers. Saved. Born again. But there's no drive. There's no passion. And what they did on Monday, they did on Tuesday. Every day was like every other day. And Paul the Apostle said, the way I look at you, you're good, you're neat, and you're stable, you're steadfast, but I can't see fire here. I can't see evangelism here. I can't see passion here. I cannot see a drive here. Tell me now, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? When people see us, when people observe us, when people look at what we're doing and what we're not doing, when people see how we're systematic, but we're slow, we're systematic, but we're stagnant, we're systematic, but we are just there. And we're not moving anything, nothing is moving us. They must be asking us, tell me now, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? What we do after we receive the Holy Spirit will tell the world that in reality we have received the Holy Spirit. Growing impact. You will have impact. Your country, you will have impact. Beyond your country, you will have impact. Look at me. I'm not a Cameroonian. I am a Nigerian. I have impact in my country, Nigeria. You will have impact in your country, Cameroon. I leave Nigeria. I come to Cameroon. I go to Togo. 
I go to Ghana. I go to many countries in Africa. I go to many countries outside Africa. Outside my country. I have impact. Outside your country. I said outside your country. If you don't have any passport, go and get passport. You will have impact outside your country. Growing impact in ministry through the Holy Spirit. Three things we're looking at. Number one, receive, resist not the Holy Spirit. If you're going to receive somebody, you're not resisting him at the same time. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is a person. Receive him. Resist not the Holy Spirit. Number two, raise ruin not the harvested souls. The reason God gives us the Holy Spirit is so that we'll get to the harvest field. <coughs> and when we get to the harvest field, we have the souls into the kingdom. Raise a vested souls, ruin not a vested souls. Number three, renew, repress not the humble spirit. Your personality is renewed. When the Holy Ghost comes and your passion, your consecration, your commitment are renewed when you have the Holy Ghost. Your drive, your passion. Your purpose, your perseverance. It's renewed when you receive the Holy Ghost. Repress not the humble spirit. Look at number one. It says, receive, receive not the Holy Spirit. He wants us to receive. He doesn't want us to reject or to resist. Acts chapter 1 again verse 8. But he shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When the Holy Ghost comes. He doesn't make differentiation between men and women. Between the young and the old. Everyone expecting will receive. You will receive. Amen. When the rain comes down from heaven, there's no discrimination. If you bring your bucket out, if you bring your drum out, the rain will come on your bucket, on your drum. And as the power of the Holy Ghost comes, are you available? I am available. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. When Jesus went to heaven, those disciples locked themselves up in a room in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It was upper room. Upper room did not take them up before the Holy Ghost came. The upper room did not take fear away from them before the Holy Ghost came. 
But it's when the Holy Spirit comes, fear will be taken away from you. If they heard that the Sanhedrin or the Pharisees or Sadducees were coming, they blocked the way, they locked the door. I don't want any of those uh, Pharisees to come and see me here. There will be trouble. Before the Holy Ghost comes, you are afraid. You lock your door. I don't want to see that angry face. I don't want to see those frowning faces. You lock your door. When those religious leaders get up and they threaten you, you collapse. When the Holy Ghost comes, those doors in Jerusalem, you open your door, you come out. It's when the Holy Ghost comes. You see that man at the beautiful gate. <clears throat> and then you see silver and gold, have I none? What I have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Ye shall receive power. The power to move. The power to go everywhere. The power without any restriction. The power without the fear of man. The power for fire. He shall receive power. The power to keep on moving. The power to pray. The power to heal. The power to destroy the works of the devil. The power to be bold. The power to do and achieve. That's what you are receiving today. He shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Before the Holy Ghost comes, you close your mouth. <laughs> you know what to say. When you see people you need to talk to, fear will shut your mouth. You'll be thinking, I don't know how to talk. I'm a stammerer. I can't even talk to the people near me. What if I talk and they don't accept? When the Holy Ghost comes, something from inside will open your mouth. The wisdom of God will come out. The word of salvation will come out. And everywhere you go, you'll be witnesses unto him. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. Please understand the word of God. He didn't say first in Jerusalem. And when you finish everything in Jerusalem, then Judea. No, he said both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. You see, you'll be a man of all trade and master of everything. You know, some people say, we have not finished in Jerusalem. How can we go to Judea? And then go to Samaria. And then go to the uttermost part of the earth. Have you won? Have you evangelized everybody in Jerusalem? He said, when the power comes, you walk in Jerusalem, you're on to Judea, come back to Jerusalem, and then go to Samaria, come back to Jerusalem, because that's your headquarters. And then you go to the uttermost part of the earth. I see somebody there today, you will move out. 
you will rise up. And while you go everywhere, the power will keep on increasing. Because that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to receive. God gives. I receive. God gives. You receive. Acts chapter 2. We're reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Peter, do you remember a few days ago? It's not up to even two months now. Because this is the 50th day after Jesus went to heaven. <clears throat> 50, 60 days ago. Less than two months ago. Are you one of them? No. I've never seen the man. I think you are a disciple of Jesus. No. I've never followed him. Two months ago. Today. Two months after. Power has come. And Peter said unto them. He wasn't looking down. He wasn't cringing. He wasn't afraid. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, all fear will flee from your life. Where you were cringing, compromising before, you will stand in the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, and in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. And ye shall, here is the word again, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 39. For the promise is unto you. Are you there? The promise is unto you. The promise is unto you. The promise is unto you. And to your children. The promise of power is unto you. The promise of confidence is unto you. The problem of fire, fire, power, power, fire. Everything cold in your life will become hot. Because the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. Afar off. Afar off. When we talk afar off, like I'm standing here. The people in the front seat, they are far, but they're a little bit near. Those who are way at the back, they didn't even have seats in the, in the place where we are. Far off. And the promise will get to you there. Here we are in the upper room in Jerusalem. Afar off in Africa. Afar off in Cameroon. Afar off in all the nations of the world. The promise is unto you. I see you today. Be full of power. Be full of fire. I see that God has been thinking about you. That he will give you power. He knew that this program will be at this time. <clears throat> he knew it will not be in January. He knew 
it will be in me. He knew that you are welcome. And he has been waiting for you. That the promise will be unto them that are far off. As many as the Lord our God shall call. Today you will receive power. Now when I receive power. I must do something that will show I've got the power. And I must avoid some things that will hinder the power, limit the power, quench the power. After receiving the power, he abandon not the spirit. You receive a visitor. You receive a guest. He has come in. He's sitting there in your sitting room. You leave him there. And you're going to be doing whatever you were doing before. You abandon the guest. When the Holy Ghost comes, he has entered. He came with power. He came with authority. He came with the might of heaven. Abandon not the spirit. B. Blaspheme not the spirit. You see those Pharisees? They said Jesus did what he did by Beelzebub. And Jesus won them. Those who blaspheme against the spirit of God, there's no forgiveness. Abandon not the spirit. When you are going to evangelize, no, you are going with the power of the spirit. When you are going to preach, rely on the power of the spirit. When you are going to pray, you are praying for the sick. Because I believe that from this time on now, you will pray for the sick and the sick will recover. Yeah. You know, uh, because we are in a crusade, and the people expect me to pray for the sick. If I called you, and I told you pray for the sick, the people will be unhappy. That's why I didn't call you to come and pray for the street last night. But you know, we're having a conference somewhere. And I gave the word of God to the people. And I said, today, the healing will come through the people there. So I said, if you are sick, raise up your hand. I said, Go to the person nearest to you. The sisters to the women. The brothers to the men. And I said, lay hands on them. And they laid hands on them. I said, pray for them. And they prayed for them. I say, say in Jesus' name I pray. They said, in Jesus' name I pray. I said, now check up yourself. If you are healed, come. Many, many people came. Today, you receive power. The power to heal. When you get back to your station, to your ministry, Don't say, I wish Pastor Kumuyi were here today. You are there, Jesus is there. You are there, the Holy Ghost is there. Lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. 
See, contradict not the spirit. Contradict not the spirit. The spirit says you can. When you say I cannot, that's contradiction. The spirit says, rise up and speak. You say I don't have the courage, that's contradiction. The spirit says, run, you will not be tired. I'm sorry, I cannot run. And the spirit says, now it's your turn. God will walk wonders through you. You say, I'm sorry, I don't feel like. Contradict not the spirit. What God says you can do, you can do. What God says you have, you have. Where the position was seated in heavenly places with Christ. Where God says you are, that's where you are. D, despise not the spirit. Look at that brother there. He's short. He's slim. And his grammar is not very good. The Holy Ghost is not in the grammar. The Holy Ghost is in the heart. Don't despise that man. Because if you despise him because of grammar, you're despising the one that is walking through him. Look at that sister. That sister has some personal problems. And then she comes and she wants to do something. And you say, but I know the history and the story of this sister. And you look down on her. You are not despising her. You are despising who lives in her. Can I remind you of the story of Abraham and Abimelech? Abimelech had a challenge, a problem. Now the whole family barren. God shut up the wombs of everyone in the family of Abimelech. And God told Abimelech, Go to Abraham. He is my prophet. He will pray for you. And barrenness will vanish away in your family. Give a good amen. amen. And here is Abraham. Going to pray for Abimelech because they are barren. Hold on. Abraham himself has not got the promised child. Sarah, barren. Abraham, no child. Abraham, no child. Go pray for Abimelech that has no child. What if Abimelech said, Abraham, you come to pray for me. Give me your testimony first. Show me your miracle child first. And Abraham said, no child yet. And you want to pray for me? Abimelech dis did not despise Abraham. Abraham, you have no child. You want to pray for me? Let me kneel down. Despise not the Holy Spirit. You see, that is what makes us to move on in ministry. He now, it tells us, exchange not the Spirit. 
that is the spirit of the world. There's the spirit of God. And now when you want to minister, don't exchange the Holy Spirit with the spirit of the world. If I do not forsake, frustrate the Holy Spirit. G, grieve not the Holy Spirit. You know, it's like you're, you're moving on. Is the doctor, is the giver, is the provider, is the nourisher, is the one that will bless your life. Don't grieve him. Anything you will do, anything you will say, that the Holy Ghost will be grieved and withdraw. Grieve not the Spirit of God. Had it not your heart against the Spirit. And intercede not without the Holy Spirit. You receive the Spirit. You embrace the Spirit. You love the Spirit. You're moving on in the Spirit. And you do not allow any separation between you and the Spirit of God. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, your race, you do not ruin the harvested souls. You're a man of destiny. You're a woman of destiny. You came to this world to accomplish something. And the life you live every day is not for nothing. Your life will amount to something. And you are conscious of that every time. Look at Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 24. Neither say they in their heart. Let us now fear the Lord. Our God. That has given us rain. Both the former and the latter rain. In a season. He has given you opportunity in the right season. He has given you the calling in the right season. And then in the season, he reserves unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. He has reserved it for you. Why has that not pleased me evangelized? It's reserved for you. You didn't say amen to that. You know, a church is collapsing. It's scattering. People are leaving that church. And then the Spirit of God, now the Spirit of God will not come and talk physically. He may use your leader. He may use your overseer. He may use the senior pastor and say, you are going to get to that place. The church is collapsing there. Why didn't another person get there before you got there to revive that church? He has reserved unto you the appointed weeks of the harvest. Look at that person. She's sick. Her husband is a pastor. And then they call you. Come and pray for this person. I about her husband. Her husband is a preacher too. Let her husband go and pray for her. No. The Lord has reserved for you the appointed weeks of the harvest. No question. What will this man do? What will this woman do? Why me? 
Because God is giving you a special privilege. And it says you are the one that will bring the glory to God in this situation. And when he results for you the appointed weeks of the harvest and you take the opportunity, many good things will happen through you. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. Proverbs 10, verse 5. He that gathered in summer is a wise son. But he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. God has appointed you that this is what you will do. This is where you will go. I want to sleep. I am, I'm tired. I want to rest. Other people of my age, they are resting and sleeping. Long time ago, they have retired. I want to retire. When God has given you the appointed weeks of the harvest, you will not sleep. You will not run away. You will stay at your post of duty. You will gather the harvest. You will keep the harvest. You will grow the harvest. Because that is what God has appointed for you to do. That village is waiting. Waiting for you. The community is waiting. Waiting for you. You will go, you will do, you will achieve, you will bring harvest into the kingdom. Look at John. John chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 35. John chapter 4, verse 35. Say not ye that are yet four months. I can sleep now. There is still time. Don't say that. I can relax now and go sightseeing. There's still time. Don't say that. This is not the appropriate time for me to be jumping and running. Don't say that. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, on the fields, plural. Plural. You know, you know, there are people that they just want to concentrate on this field. I'm here. I've not even finished this one. And they are there, they are there. You see, in the word of God, there are multiple events and activities for you and for me. Look at Moses. He was before Pharaoh. Look at him. He was before the people of Israel. Look at Moses. He was a leader in front of the people going before them. Look at him. He's busy opening the Red Sea for them to pass on. Look at Moses helping Joshua to have victory on the battlefield. And look at that same Moses is bringing water out of the rock. God has not limited you. You will not be limited. He has not restricted you. You will not be restricted. Look on the fields, plural. But there, but there, but there, God will confirm the word in your mouth. 
it says they are white already to harvest. They are white already to harvest. And there are things we do, there are things we do not do. J journey not without the Spirit. Paul and Silas and the team, they wanted to go to Bithynia, and the Spirit said, don't go there now, another time. Okay, keep nothing but by the Spirit only. Whatever I cannot keep by the Spirit is not worth keeping. Whatever I cannot hold without the Spirit is not worth holding. But the standard of the word, the work he has given, the commission, the great commission he has given, will keep by the Holy Spirit. El lie not to the Spirit. Uh, here is Ananias. And it comes to Peter. You see, there are people that think God has set the number of years we we'll live. We cannot live further than that. They say 70 years. God has given uh, everyone to live. If he tries, maybe he gets to 80 years. First call, after that, no more. But you know, that psalm is the psalm of Moses. And Moses that spoke about 70, 80 years, lived up to 120 years. If you have finished what God wants you to do in 70 years, you are released, you can go home. If you have finished at 80, God releases you, you can go home. But if you are just starting at 80, like Moses, you cannot go now. The Holy Spirit will keep you alive. Yeah. Your blood system, everything will be refined. You'll keep alive. Yeah. 70 years, general. But you are not general. You are special. You are significant. You are peculiar. That's what Ezekiah realized. And Isaiah came to him and said, Ezekiah, you are finished. You, you, you are finished. And set your house in order. Because you will die. He allowed Ezekiah to go. Have you ever received a prophecy? And the person sending the prophecy wrote it in red ink. And then he told you some reddish information. And the conclusion of the information is you are finished. What do you do with the letter? Ezekiel threw that aside. Every negative letter that comes to you, throw it aside. And he said, God, I am finished, but I have not finished. Life finishing, labor has not finished. And God said the same I say. Say, go tell him. He is not finished anymore. How many years? How many years? 
he will give you enough number of years to finish what he called you to do. And so, don't minimize the Spirit of God. My point is, Ananias should not have died on that day. It's not the will of God. It was lying against the spirit that cut short his life. And the wife came that same day a few hours later. They had agreed together to lie to the Holy Ghost. And they shouldn't have died on that day. And Peter said, why has Satan filled your heart and you agreed with your husband to tell a lie? This is not a lie unto man. It's a lie unto God. Why are you tempting the spirit of God? Your life will not be cut short. You will not be an Ananias. You will not be Sapphira. Emma misuse not the spirit. Misuse not the spirit. The spirit wants to do something great, something mighty, something dynamic, something heavenly in your life. Don't pull down the spirit to the level of a messenger. Is God the Holy Ghost? In the third person in the Trinity. Misuse not the spirit. And neglect not the spirit. Neglect not the spirit. You're trying to carry load. Look at the person sitting down there. She wants to help you carry the load. You look away from him. You look away from her. And you're trying and trying. And this thing is too heavy for you. And you neglect the one that will come and help you to carry it. Neglect not the spirit. You struggle. You try. You do your best. But you are not able to carry. Holy Spirit, come and help me. It will help you. The load you couldn't carry by yourself. From today, you will carry. You will never say again with the partnership of the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I cannot. You and the Holy Spirit, you are more than majority. Amen. Oh, obstruct not the Spirit. Oh, uh, obstruct not the Spirit. When God wants to do something and he's about doing it, and you come and you're on before the Holy Spirit trying to hinder him. No, you want to cooperate with the Spirit of God. If all the members in our church, I mean in your church, if they will take understanding and do all this that we're talking about, there'll be a revival in every church from this day. Amen. P, pervert not the spirit. What he says, say it exactly that way. Q, quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. From today, the Holy Spirit will now begin to move in unprecedented ways in our ministries. Amen. 
And when somebody begins to talk, begins to preach, begins to pray, and he's not been praying like that before, but you need to understand that we put that cold kettle on fire. And now the kettle never made any noise before, but the water now is boiling, and the steamer and the vapor is rising, and it's throwing away the lead. This does not happen before in the presence of the fire under the kettle. Don't say, stop, stop, stop. Don't say stop. Quench not the spirit. When something is moving inside of you, you're not a man, you're not a woman used to running. You know, when, when you talk, you stay in one place. That's what I used to do. For one hour, one and a half hours, I stand there. I will not move. I open the Bible. I look at just the person there in front of me. And it was all right. But the fire came more. The power came more. And now I can go there, go there. Don't coin this. And say, Pastor, stay like you used to stay. Stand like you used to stand. I say, no. No. The spirit is moving. As the spirit is moving you, moving me, it will move you. If you have not been jumping before, you will jump. If you have not been running before, you will run. So, but sometimes they ask me, when, you know, I told you I'm not going to be 83 next, a few days' time. I preach one message in the morning. I preach in the afternoon. I preach in the evening. Three messages in a day. And when I do the number three, I don't stay like this on the pulpit. I stand up. I look at the people. I point at you. They say, Pastor, are you not tired? I say, when the spirit is moving, I never get tired. My brother, where are you there? My sister, where are you there? Fire power upon your life in Jesus' name. God bless you. Quench not the spirit. <clears throat> I resist not the spirit. In whatever direction the spirit wants to move, resist not the spirit. The Lord will be with you. And as you go from today, you will preach like you never preached. You will pray like you never prayed. You will sing like you never sang. There is singing with a small S. There is singing with a capital S. You know, anybody can sing almost. But Saul had the evil spirit. It tortured him. It tormented him. It vexed him. And he could find nothing. A king has access to all the medical opportunities in his country. Nothing worked. And I called somebody with an instrument just to play the instrument there is playing little p 
Yes, playing capital P. And David came. And he sat down. And he put his hands on their heart. And the evil spirit recognized the inspired music. And immediately David began to play. The Holy Spirit said, I cannot endure this. The, the evil spirit said, I cannot endure this one. The evil spirit went out. Yeah. Our singers will sing with inspiration from today. Yeah. Don't misunderstand me. They have been singing well. They have been singing with inspiration and illumination. But now they are receiving the Holy Spirit in a new way. And when the Holy Spirit comes, everything you do will now be at a higher level. We're looking at point number three. Point number three, we're looking at renew, repress not the humble spirit. Renewal has now come. For me. I mean it. I said for me. You know, I've been renewed. But it looks like um, coming to Cameroon is changing me. Power in Cameroon. Anointing in Cameroon. Before I came. You know, I had the will. I, I told you, William, will I am. I had the will. I had the purpose. I had the passion. But since I came to Cameroon, I feel I can jump higher than ever jump. I can move faster than I ever did. If that is happening to me, Cameroon, you inside. Amen. You inside. Amen. Higher. Amen. Father. Amen. Greater. Amen. More. Amen. Come upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Renew, repress not the humble spirit. Renewal will come in your life. And it means strive not with the spirit. My spirit shall not always strive with man. Tench not the spirit. Sapphira, why have you agreed together to tempt the Holy Spirit? Underestimate not the spirit. Don't estimate the Holy Ghost in you. Through you, he will say what you have never said. He will accomplish what you have never accomplished. And don't underestimate what he can do through you. Be vex not the spirit. Vex not the spirit. And now, W, withdraw not from the Spirit. It's exciting to have the Holy Spirit. It's ex exonerating, it's uh, exalting to be united with the Spirit. And you will not withdraw from the Spirit. And I pray the Spirit of God will never withdraw from you. Exasperate not the Spirit. Don't tire out the Spirit. Don't uh, combat, don't have any conflict with the Spirit. And yield not to another Spirit. And zigzag not from uh, the spirit. Look at those two children praying. Play. 
one is running after the other. And the one in front does not want this other one behind to catch him. So he runs here, 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 and so that the one behind will not catch him. Zigzag, zigzag. Don't zigzag the Holy Spirit anymore. It's coming to you. Stay where it will find you. Don't run away. Whatever you have done, whatever you feel, when the Holy Spirit comes, it will care for you. It will comfort you. It will lift you up. It will revive you. It will renew you. And from that moment on, a new life will begin. Can it start now? I say, can it start now? You will never be the same again. Allow me to give my own testimony. Now that I've come to Cameroon, I will never be the same again. And you, and you, rise up, rise up and tell the Lord, rise up and tell the Lord, here I am, here we are, the Holy Spirit wants to take over your life. Receive. Receive. He shall receive power. 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 Fire power. Everything cold, the Lord will revive. Fire, fervency, power, new life, receive. No sleeping anymore. It's coming. Power it has come. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Don't resist. Receive. Raise up their vested souls. Raise up. Don't ruin. He has left for you the appointed weeks of the harvest. Go and labor. Go and work. Power is going with you. A new anointing going with you. A new baptism going with you. A new courage going with you. A new dominion. It's there. It's there. It's there. Receive. 
receive receive it shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses
In Jesus' name we pray. You have received power. And what you do after this session now, you will do in the power of the Lord. What used to knock you down will not knock you down anymore. What you were afraid of in the past, you will not be afraid anymore. Your life will be powerful. Amen. Your life will be impactful. Amen. You will not live a useless life. Amen. Everyone without exception. Amen. You are going up. Amen. You are moving forward. Amen. Achievement in your life. Amen. What are you? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the spirit. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the fire. Thank you for the passion. Thank you for everything you've done. Lord, without exception. Every brother, every sister. Every minister, every child of God. Lord, I pray from this hour a new anointing in your life in Jesus' name. Father, for everyone, a new breakthrough. A new breakthrough. Every door before you will be open. Everything you ought to do, the power, the anointing to do, will come upon your life. Yeah. A, a new courage to conquer. Yeah. A new courage to conquer. Yeah. Upon every brother and every sister. Yeah. Dynamite in your life. Yeah. Everything that needs to be shaken will be shaken around you by that dynamite in Jesus' name. A new energy supernatural. You will not operate at the natural level anymore. Supernatural Enablement. Yeah. Fire and fervency. Yeah. Fire and fervency. Yeah. Now you can stand. Yeah. Now you can run. Yeah. Now you can work. Yeah. Now you can labor. Yeah. And I pray the engine of fire, yeah. the engine of the Spirit of God will work in every life, every heart, in Jesus' name. Now you can go in this power. Valiant man, valiant woman, go in this power. And you continue to grow. You continue to glow. That this power in your life will never come down. Will never wait. Lord, I pray the power to heal for, for that brother, for that sister. This sign shall follow you as believe. You will lay your hands on the sea and they shall recover. Lord, I pray inspiration for every life. Illumination for every life. You will not be in the dark anymore. The light of the glory of God will shine through your life. Joy. 
joy today. Amen. Joy tomorrow. Amen. Joy beyond the average. Amen. Joy unspeakable. Amen. In your life. Amen. Cast away the sorrow. Amen. Cast away the sadness. Amen. Wear a happy face. Amen. And everywhere you go. The joy of the Lord will be with you. And you will do what you have never done. When you wake up in the morning. You see, this is the day. The day the Lord has made. The day of fulfillment. We will hear testimonies coming from you. Testimonies coming from Cameroon. The people that are knitted up. The people who go and they run for the Lord. Good testimony will never cease in your mouth. Lord, now for everyone. A special gift for everyone. Brother, get your own. Sister, receive your own. You have received power. Since the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now you will be witnesses. Here in Duala. And there in Yaoundé. And there in Baminda. Everywhere in this country, you are witnesses in Jesus' name. Beyond and above. Father away. Well, hear the stories of exploits through you. Lord, confirm it in every life. The change, the transformation you have brought for me, for us in Cameroon, that, uh, that transformation will continue to glow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go to the Mondays, Merci Seigneur. Confirm your power in every life. In Jesus' name we pray.